Jumping Flash, World 5, Stage 1. Go, go, go! Now, I will say one thing about this stage in particular. It is very easy to get yourself turned around here. Because there are multiple sections of islands and a bunch of floating platforms that you have to go around, so it's very easy to get lost. Now, at the beginning of the stage, you will immediately want to start going up on the nearest building, because there's a jet pod right above about 500 yards away from where your start point is. And if you get vertigo very easily, this is not for you. Vertigo or motion sickness, really. Now, there are a couple different things you can do. What I'm going to do is start heading toward the right via this highway, and you can see two jet pods within view from where that section of the highway ends. And I always use this guy as sort of a branching point, and you can just barely make that. I didn't even time that jump very well. It's actually not that difficult to get to. And then you can use this as a junction and land on top of him again, because I just like killing this guy for some reason. Whatever. And we can head straight for the next jet pod, which is inside this building. And we've already got just one jet pod left, and this jet pod, like a couple of the other levels, is one that you have to go to the exit and then branch off of that to be able to find. It's not entirely obvious where they put this one. As you can see, the exit is right here. Landing on it does tell you how many jet pods you have left. Now, actually, let's go into this real quick. Oh, beautiful colors. Ah, uh, the worst feeling in this game is having a power pill and not knowing what to do with it. Oh, I want to tackle you. I want to tackle you. Oh my, I got another power pill? Seriously? Wow, that is amazing timing, and yet I can't use that at all, so it was worthless. Now, if we head to the top of this building, you can see just over there, more floating platforms leading to another area. That is where we want to go. And we're going to use this platform because it's stationary. You don't have to deal with the moving platform bullshit. And then you'll find a crane right here. We're going to go all the way up, and the jet pod is on a floating island right near it. And then get back to the exit, we gotta backtrack, so we're gonna go all the way down this thing. Oh! And kill this guy for maybe the, what, fourth, fifth time? Land on the edge of this platform, we can go straight over to this section of the highway. And from here, jump on the exit, killing this guy yet again. I know I didn't find any, like, bonus stages this time around, but it's getting hard to find that stuff anymore. <laughs> Alright, now for stage two, it's another cityscape stage, except this one takes place in the dark. So you know what that means? Crazy ass lighting. Now, again, we're gonna head straight and slightly to the left in order to find this first jet pod, which a well-timed triple jump from that building with the crab on it will help you get to. Now I'm actually going to go back toward the beginning for a moment, following these uh, red brick roadways to show you something. Something that you don't encounter very often, which is a 1-Up. One one you don't encounter those very often just laying around as item pickups. You get them all the time in bonus stages and like point totals. Oh god, another power pill! Jeez, that's like the third one! Oh, and I don't have anything to kill with it. But as I was saying before, uh, your one-ups are mostly going to come from bonus stages and uh, getting like your score up to a certain amount. It's like something hundred thousand. Now to get the other two jet pods, what you can do is use your uh, triple jump to scale this building, jump back, double jump, and you'll be on top of this building, and you'll be within perfect reach of both of these jet pods. The other way that you can access the next jet pod is by traversing a bunch of small floating platforms that light on fire. You can see them around this. But with this method, 
all you have to do is jump on this one platform, and the fire's not going to hurt you too much if it does hit you at all. It is possible to land on the corners of these platforms and not take any damage. And then we're going to head back toward this red brick junction again because the exit platform is floating right above it. And this is going remarkably fast. Now, this boss is actually a boss that you see in a lot of different games. And I will explain it when it shows up. But you've all seen it. You all probably hate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the shape-shifting boss. Ready to go? It starts off as just this mess of cubes. And then it'll go all staticky like this and change into one of three forms. This is the first form, the squid. At least I think that's what it is. Squid, octopus, whatever. But the point is, it'll float over to whatever platform you're standing on and drop bombs. Hover for a moment, and then turn upside down and charge down into the platform. And what I just showed you is how you avoid that, which is just triple jump above it, land on it for a while, and when it turns over to smash the platform, just triple jump in midair. Well, actually, it's a double jump in midair, but whatever. Oh, jeez, it turned into it again? And by the way, there is no rhyme or reason to what form it takes next. It's completely random. And in this fight in particular, I got insanely lucky. Because he turns into this squid octopus form. Like, almost the entire fight is him in that form. And one of the forms he didn't even turn into. Although, I think he turns into a second form this time around. If I remember correctly. Yes, this is the urchin form. This is the worst form you can encounter. It shoots out a bunch of exploding spikes. Uh, I'll, and the best thing you can do against this is just run. Run and try to avoid them. The form that he never turns into for this fight in particular... And, like I said, it's random, so it was just pure dumb luck that he didn't turn into it. Is, he will turn into this robot guy that walks around. And the key to that guy is, it will always do the same thing before it actually attacks you. It'll walk toward whatever platform you're standing on, turn around, do a circle, and then come back and face you. And when it does that, it'll launch, like the heat-seeking missiles that you know and love from several other enemies in the game. And you can just, like, jump around, dodge those, hit them again. It stays in that form longer than any other form of, uh, that it'll turn into, and I cannot begin to explain how lucky I was that he only used that one form for almost the entire fight. Oh dear god, that's a massive bonus. Yeah, score bonus happens at 300,000. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it begins. Haha, <laughs> take a good look. I knew this might happen, so I created this secret machine. Never underestimate the power of science. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Insano's grandpa. Amazing performance. Next time on Jumping Flash, we end this.